um, and proprietary software. MRI, um, again, uh, the, the strengths are mostly around its uh, ability to, to um, differentiate different types of contrast. Uh, we have different types of sequences. Um, again, I think you guys will be aware. Uh, you may have seen the terms T1, T2, stir, flare, et cetera. Um, and, and what these relate to are the specific parameters that have been applied in the course of acquiring the MRI. We use uh, what are called radio frequency pulses, which um, measure, which measure uh, energy um, at times of relaxation um, of uh, proton spin. And, uh, you, and you know, without going into the physics too much, um, in terms of making these measurements, we know that different types of, of tissues have different uh, measurements relative to one another. So looking at these individual measurements and forming a map of those measurements of the tissues relative to one another, we can, we can decipher different tissues from one another. Um, uh, I said uh, in terms of weaknesses, cost is, you know, potentially an issue, um, you know, in, again, in this modern era of, of trying to, trying to uh, keep healthcare costs uh, at a minimum, ideally. Um, MRI is becoming more and more um, ubiquitous and, and more and more available. Um, that being said, even, even if you do have several MRIs in your hospital, what, what you probably experience, uh, depending on where you work, is that there are significant wait times uh, to obtain an MRI. I mean, you can obtain a CT scan in under a minute, whereas, uh, whereas an MRI um, with, with uh, multiple sequences will, will, will take you traditionally, again, at least uh, 20 minutes, um, and, and typically a lot longer than that because of the various uh, requirements and evaluations that are needed to be made prior to performing the MRI. So it becomes a, it becomes a, a, a logistic um, and scheduling issue um, more than anything in, in the context of a, of a hospital practice. And, and it's important to bear that in mind. So, you know, oftentimes, you know, the, the nasty radiologist will kind of call you up and say, hey, do you really need an MRI for this? You know, could we not just do a CT or, you know, can you, you know, can you not get by? Um, <laughs> you know, which is probably not, not something that you want to hear, but, but that, that's, that's the explanation. That, that may change over the over the next few years um, with some of the new technologies that we have if you're interested um, you can you can look at uh, things like compressed sensing which is uh, technology from the IT world um, also called uh, sparse um, sparse uh, data set evaluation um, and and that that really allows us to accelerate the amount of uh, uh, the amount of or, or reduce the amount of time that we need to acquire a, a, a data of of MRI, um, but again, just a traditional MRI uh, T1. Uh, you've probably heard of. Um, we 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 pretty much use this uh, uh, because of its ability to show us fat, and and we always and you may have heard the term "fat is your friend." So um, so the fat that that courses between the various muscle groups, etc., um, allows us to see structures. Um, immediately adjacent to it. So we typically use it for, um, for anatomy um, because blood products also have specific characteristics on a particularly T1 sequence. It's quite useful for showing things like hematoma. Because marrow signal um, uh, changes when you have uh, infiltration, the, the, the typically intermediate signal of, of tumor becomes very dark. Uh, therefore, it, it can be very good for, for looking for uh, tumor infiltration. Um, now, T2 is really all about, you know, T1 is mostly about looking at fat and blood. T2 is mostly about looking at, at water. Um, so so uh, water, obviously, uh, CSF being water, um, also water being edema. Um, you know, we often say tissue is stupid in the sense that you know, there are only certain things that that that, that tissue can do and, and can show you on, on, a, on a particular image. Um, and that being that, you know, it can either be the same as what it normally is. It can either be brighter than what it normally is, or it can be darker than, than what it normally is. Um, and oftentimes that's not specific, but if you look across multiple uh, parameters, um, you can often utilize that in order to come up with a good, uh, a good differential 
um, and, and hopefully come up with a specific diagnosis. Um, the term, you know, when, when T2, you know, first came out, people, people spoke about um, this being a, a sort of a virtual myelogram. So instead of, in, you know, injecting the patient and, and doing a, a somewhat invasive procedure, you could do this, this non-invasively and really have a good view of uh, the spinal cord, the nerve roots, et cetera. Because you have edema um, in the context of most in, in the in the context of most uh, injuries, uh, this really becomes your workhorse sequence in terms of saying is there injury to the disc, to the ligament, uh, to the marrow? Uh, you know, is there bone bruising? Um, is there damage to the cord, etc.? Um, gradient echo, and we have and we have multiple variants on 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 a lot of these themes. So again, I'm I'm really showing you the the basic sequences here. Um, you know, you'll see a number of, of variations. So, for example, you, you might see a, a sequence that, that isn't labeled as T2, but maybe it's labeled as flare or it's labeled as stir in the case of the spine. And, and what that is is, is, a, is a T2 sequence which has been adjusted in a certain way uh, to either, you know, remove, you remove fat or to remove um, the physiologic uh, uh, water. So, so the only uh, uh, bright signal you're seeing is from pathologic edema as opposed to water from, say, CSF. Um, but, but, but really just telling you what, what the basic fundamentals of these sequences are that, that you will see in everyday practice. Similarly, um, we talk about gradient echo or T2 star. Uh, the, the, the new, you know, some, some people call this a hemosiderin sequence because it's uh, typically good for looking for blood products. Uh, some people, um, some vendors, have have names for for uh, the newer, better uh, gradient echo sequences, uh, like you may have seen a, what's called a SWI or susceptibility weighted sequence. Um, I think uh, uh, GE calls it a SWAN, which is uh, which is their own proprietary name, um, SWAN. Um, but but the long and the short of it is that wherever you have blood products or calcium, um, these things are going to show up better and brighter. Uh, or, or actually better in darker, my bad. Um, so so the, the low signal, which is what we call signal dropout that occurs when you have a substance which forms its own, um, its own uh, uh, magnetic field around itself, gets exacerbated by this, by this type of sequence. Um, and, and, and it's kind of one of those things where, you know, is it a feature or is it a bug? And uh, it's a bug when you're trying to see uh, details adjacent to, for example, metalware, and metalware is causing susceptibility artifact. But it's a feature when you can use that that tendency of of, the, of these kinds of materials to show you blood products better. So you may have a very small microhemorrhage, and you may see it better on a on a gradient or a T2 star or hemosiderin sequence because of that um, because of that mechanism that I just that I just uh, said, uh, if that makes sense. Um, traditionally, it was also quite useful to, to use for looking at the neural foramina. So if you look at, at this, um, these axial cuts, you have, you know, the cord, you can see, um, to some degree, the nerve roots, and you can see the unconvertible spurring and the facet arthropathy contributing to the narrowing of the neural, fora of the neural foramina. And, and on the traditional set of sequences, um, this would have been uh, the best way to, this would have been the best way to look at the neural foramina. That this has changed to some degree now that we have very good high resolution 3D sequences that we can cut in multiple planes. Um, but but traditionally this was this was what what would be used. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.